Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be working on this baseball themed cup. Baseball season is in full force and if you love baseball like me, you're very excited. So I'm gonna take some inspiration from my friend Mallory Pagnata from Made by Manny and Mal. She made this adorable popcorn tub tumbler and I was immediately obsessed and I bought these little popcorns to make a popcorn topper for the popcorn tumbler. And then I ended up getting this vinyl and I was like, you know what? Actually, we're gonna pivot and we're gonna make this baseball themed tumbler instead. So here we are. So I'm gonna start out with a prepped and spray painted base. And this is a 32 ounce from the Steel Magnolia, which is now Tipsy Magnolia. Um, and I wanted to use this one because it was a lot taller than the rest of them. There was a lot of real estate to work with and I didn't really want to have to cram everything into one space. And so I stripped this cup, which is why it looked so rough in the beginning, and then decided to glitter over it. So I'm putting Suki from Peachy Olive Glitters on there. As usual, I have a discount code with Peachy, so that will be linked in the description box. At this point, I have two coats of epoxy on this. I'm gonna work on sanding the top and bottom rims, and then I'm gonna go in with my striping assistant tool from the Amy's Make Everything to make sure that both my horizontal and vertical stripes are completely straight. Once I have that marked off, I'm gonna take my painter's tape and I'm going to stripe horizontally first just so I have a good stopping point where I want to end my vertical stripes. And I'm going to alternate. So I've got this tiny little strip of painter's tape. That's going to be what's supposed to mimic a baseball jersey, the stripes, like the pinstriping on a baseball jersey. So I'm gonna use the tiny pinstripes and keep those on the tumbler. And then I'm just using this one inch painter's tape as kind of a guide to make sure that my pinstripes are evenly spaced out. Now you will see as we get towards the end of this that the pinstripes didn't end up meeting up in the middle uh, exactly at the one inch mark. And so I had to go back and kind of finagle it, rework it so it was just a little bit more than an inch on each side and evened those out so the seam where the stripes end up meeting was even. After I had everything evened out and taped off where I wanted it, I used press and seal saran wrap and just wrapped it around the bottom portion where I plan to use my printable vinyl. I made sure to tape it off so no spray paint seeped underneath that press and seal. And then I used iron lac, just flat white spray paint from Hobby Lobby. This has been amazing. This this paint does not clog. It is like a one coat coverage. You don't need multiple coats. It dries in like 30 minutes dry to the touch. And it's the same price as like Rust-Oleum and Krylon. So I would 100% recommend using that and you won't have any clogging issues or anything. Anyways, so I spray painted that, let it sit for probably about 30 minutes and just pulled my pin striping. And then I let that sit for just a little bit longer because I wasn't going in with my next coat of epoxy until all the vinyl work was done. So I wanted to make sure that was completely dry. I wasn't gonna bump it and nick the paint or anything like that. And then I took this printable vinyl. This is from Banff Custom Creations. It is an opaque vinyl. So you're not gonna be able to see through um, the glitter underneath it. I cut it into just random size strips and then I used different size tape in addition to the different sized vinyl stripes and I made sure to line up the seams at the same point for every single stripe 
so we didn't have kind of a scattered design because when you look at it now, if you pull it back, you'll see that the images are lining up with one another. I'm gonna continue using these random sized painter's tape strips to um, use as kind of a guide to finish off this rest of this paint, uh, printable vinyl. And then we'll go in with the gold textured vinyl. I cut them at 11 and a half width by 0 0.05 height. Just keep in mind there is not epoxy over the spray paint so if you're using a matte or a flat spray paint chances are that your vinyl is going to lift at some point while you're laying this down just be cautious keep in mind when you're putting epoxy on it or if you're coating it with polycrylic that it may have lifted from the time that you laid the vinyl striping down to the point that you put it on your turner. So just make sure once you've got everything laid down that you go back and you press all of it down again prior to epoxying. Otherwise there's a chance it's gonna lift once you get that epoxy on it. I decided to do a baseball glitter booty on this and so I used about 25 ml of epoxy and flurries from Peachy Olive mixed in together. That was to cover the entire base of this, both the inner and the outer ring. And I used Countercultures UV resin to cure that. I did have to go back multiple times at 99 seconds each to cure it because it was a really thick glitter booty and so it needed quite a few minutes to dry or to cure um, and then once I had that done I went back and applied um, just the outline of a baseball in red metallic vinyl that matched the SVG that we're gonna end up putting on this I went and put a coat of Flynn sisters fast setting epoxy on this and let that cure while that was curing I am going to go back and start working on my popcorn topper. So as I mentioned I took a lot of inspiration from made by Manny and Mal for this cup I will link all of her information, her socials, as well as the YouTube tutorial she did on this popcorn topper in the description box for you guys if you want to go back and reference that. So we want to make sure that we have a good prepped base for this popcorn to stick to. So I'm going to ensure that I have sanded and wiped all of the contaminants off of this lid before going in with my UV resin. I used about one drop of orange and probably three to four drops of yellow and that was pretty much the perfect mixture for this buttery popcorn. This, um, These little popcorn pieces come really white and so I like buttery popcorn. I don't know about you but <laughs> I wanted some butter on my popcorn. So I just went in with a small paintbrush, dipped it in my ink mixture and put it on my popcorn and it stayed it is like super realistic <laughs> I was shocked at how realistic it looks so I'm gonna use a handful of yellow popcorn mixed in with some white popcorn just to give it a realistic effect and once I've got all of the ink applied to that I'm just gonna set it off to the side let that air dry I don't have to do anything special to it because it will be covered with UV resin in the end and then once that is all dry, I'm going to go in and start 
kind of placing how I want this to fit on the lid. Now keep in mind, you are going to want to put your straw in there if you plan to use a straw so the popcorn kernels don't interfere with the straw. This lid is not big enough, the opening's not big enough for a straw, so I wasn't too concerned about that. But I also didn't want any liquid getting into the popcorn causing mold or anything. So just be conscious of that. You can also use this as a removable topper or if you want to send a customer like an alternate topper that doesn't have any popcorn on it, that's an option as well. So when I first started putting this topper together, I was squeezing the UV resin onto the lid and onto the popcorn. As I went along, I found that it was much easier to squeeze a little bit on the popcorn that was already on the topper or on the lid. And then also to squeeze some resin in your hand and just rub your popcorn in a gloved hand as you see me do here. Um, and then it gave it a little bit of adhesive to Kind of stay in place once I set it down on the lid and that was much faster much more efficient um, once I started doing it this way it kind of stayed in place long enough for me to get that UV lamp over it and get it set in place once I had the center kernels in place where I wanted them and glued down. I'm going to take the UV resin and just work around the edges. I wanted this kind of like an overflowing popcorn bucket, which is the same thing Mallory did as well. Um, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to stick out too far or get knocked off. If you're using it, you know, every day, you don't want to bump it on something, cause the entire lid to fall apart. Um, so I wanted to be conscious of that and how far that those kernels were sticking out. So I made sure to do that very last. Uh, and then I avoided, you'll see that I avoided probably an inch, inch and a half around the lip because nobody wants to drink <laughs> popcorn kernels, plastic popcorn kernels. And you also don't want people just putting their mouth on the UV resin. So just be very mindful of that while you're doing this. So after all of the kernels were in place and they were all cured down into where I wanted them, I just took a bunch of UV resin and rubbed it all over my hands, all over the topper, made sure to cure that for probably two or three minutes. I'm sorry, two or three um, sets of 99 seconds on your UV lamp just to make sure it's not gonna be sticky. UV resin is notoriously sticky if it's not fully cured. So just be cautious of that um, because you're not going to put regular epoxy on it. You want to ensure that it is going to be completely cured or it will be toxic. Next, we're going to be working on decals. I cut this at three and a half inches wide. That is including the offset. So if you're pulling the SVG into your um, cutting software, you want to make sure that you have both layers of your offset in place where they need to be 
and then measure it at three and a half because if you're measuring the inner portion where this red vinyl would be at three and a half and then you do a double offset you're going to have a much bigger decal than three and a half inches so the first layer we're doing that metallic red vinyl that we used at the um, bottom to do the baseball decal on the glitter booty the first offset is just a plain white vinyl and the second offset is going to be that textured gold that we used in the pinstriping. I just want to make sure that all of our vinyl work is cohesive so it looks like one continuous design. Once I had my decal applied, I put that on my turner and put a coat of polycrylic over the vinyl to ensure that nothing lifted. I used one final coat of Flynn Sisters Epoxy. As I mentioned before, I do have a discount code for the Flynn Sisters Supply Shop website now, so I will link that in the description for you guys as well. And then after that final coat was fully cured, this cup was done. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. This was totally out of my element doing a topper like this. I am obsessed with how this turned out. I surprised myself that I had the patience to do this cup because it was a lot of vinyl work. Anyways, I will link all of my social medias below for you guys if you would like to join my makers group. I would love that and I will see you guys next weekend.